Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, I want to introduce you to the idea of DevOps and using Amazon Web Services to host your Drupal site. Um, that said, I've been doing a lot of work with Amazon lately, and I know I've got a couple other series on the go, but I want to get this one out there before I forgot everything. So with that said, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto website developer.com. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series if you go to the Drupal store. Each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I really appreciate all the support. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, but you do want to help out, please subscribe to the channel on YouTube or just give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, again, greatly appreciate both and they go to help to promote these video tutorials for other Drupal users. So with that, why don't we get started? Um, I've logged into my Amazon console. So if you just go to console.aws.amazon.com, you can sign up for an account. Um, when you do that, you can try out Amazon Web Services for free for a year. Um, unfortunately, the services that they give you, um, and we'll walk through this in a bit, uh, don't really aren't really conducive to Drupal. So we're not going to be using those, but um, we're going to go through the full full thing here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an EC2 instance. And what this is, is just a virtual server, as it mentions, in the cloud. And so this is what's going to actually run our Drupal code. So you'll note up here that I'm in the Oregon region. And so you've got a couple of different ones here. You want to choose the one that is closest to, I guess, where your users will be. Uh, it's possible to do this in multiple regions, but essentially what Amazon does is uh, every one of these regions is where you will have your different servers. So if I choose Oregon, I only see running instances for Oregon. If I choose North Virginia, you'll see I would get uh, running instances in North Virginia. So they are region specific. So I'm going to stick to Oregon. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually go to instances and I can launch an instance here and I have the ability to choose what I want to run with. Uh, so for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use uh, Amazon Linux because it is free tier eligible. Uh, you can use a whole bunch of other ones. And uh, while I won't go into it, you can actually choose from the AWS marketplace uh, a Drupal setup. Uh, a server that's you know pre-set up for Drupal and that kind of thing. You would just do a quick search and you go through, you see that there's the WordPress blogging one here. Um, but anyways, we're going to do it from scratch. So I'm going to launch an instance. I'm going to choose the Amazon instance. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Um, here's where you can choose the actual free tier eligible. It's a micro instance, which means you know there's only one virtual CPU. There's only one gig of memory. This isn't really conducive to Drupal because Drupal can be a bit of a hog. Uh, so my, my site is actually running on a, a small instance. So I'm going to just choose the free tier just for the sake of this, just because this is actually going to cost me a little bit of money. Uh, not a whole lot, but, uh, just for the sake of that, we're going to use micro and I can, uh, configure. And so here you can see, you can actually set up a number of instances you want. So I only want one, uh, spot instances, to be honest, I'm not too familiar with this, but this is part of the, uh, on-demand pricing and you can lower your costs and that kind of thing. So I'm not going to do that. Um, here you have the ability to set up the VPC, right? So I'm going to use my existing VPC. Um, we're not going to go too in depth around this, so don't worry about this too much. We'll just leave that again. Don't have a preference for my subnet. We're going to auto, uh, auto assign the public IP. And I'm not sure if you can hear Susie squeaking a toy behind me, but she's there. Um, in terms of the IAM role, um, this is just around your credentials. So uh, you can create a new IAM role. Why don't we go ahead and do that together? So IAM roles, these are specific users um, and roles. And so if you actually look at the IAM role, it will have policies attached to it. Um, and without going down too far the rabbit hole, maybe we'll do another video tutorial series or another video tutorial on that. Um, IAM is uh, Amazon's management console for permissions. And so when you create a role, you can attach permissions to it, and then you can create users that have that role, similar to Drupal. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I have an existing site admin, um, and you'll see that it has control over everything. I've got administrator access attached to that. Um, and so as a result, the IAM role is gonna be the site admin. Shutdown behavior. So what this means, uh, because this is a cloud instance, um, when you terminate the server, you tell Amazon you don't want it anymore, it will delete all of your code. Uh, you have the ability to stop the server. So if you needed to you know, do something maintenance related or whatnot, uh, or even restart it, that kind of thing, um, this shutdown behavior is whether or not you're going to stop it or you're going to terminate it. So highly recommend you keep that on stop because terminate, you'll lose anything on it. And then you can actually enable terminate uh, so you can't accidentally terminate it. 
This monitor here, enabling CloudWatch, sorry if you hear Susie, uh, enabling CloudWatch, what this is is monitoring for your, um, for your server. So we'll enable it and we'll take a look at it. Um, share tenancy, again, this is whether or not you're going to be uh, alone on, um, or you're not going to be alone. Um, and if you do dedicated, you're, you're alone, it's going to cost you more money. So we're just going to go ahead and check out the storage options here. So now you can see that I have the ability to choose how big I want my server to be. So I'm just going to leave it default at eight gigs. That's, that's plenty. Um, <clears throat> general purpose versus provisioned. Um, when you hear people talking about this, and if you're really going to scale to a high site, provisioned is what you want. Uh, if you just have a small site and you're not doing a whole lot with it, general purpose is, is fine. Uh, provision just means speed. Um, and so I'm going to stick with general purpose, but again, you could be going with provisioned, um, and not encrypted and it will delete on termination. So you can uncheck that. Right. And so what this is actually talking about is this is creating a, a volume for you. And so where I said, if you terminate and you lose all your files, if you, uh, create an actual volume, it will persist when you terminate that. And so that's what this is related to. It's whether or not you'll actually delete the volume when the when the uh, instance is terminated. So uh, we're not going to delete that. Now we can go ahead and tag this. And so tagging is really just a nice thing for almost like billing and reporting that kind of thing. So I can just call this uh, name. This is, uh, I don't know, we'll call this video series, right? And you can create a whole bunch of tags up to 10 um, and tag them with whatever you want. This is really, if you're only going to be launching a ton of servers, would you really want to actually start using this? If you're just doing this for your one off, you'll be fine. So next we're going to configure the security group. Um, again, so this is related to who's going to have access to this. Uh, so you see, I have access to uh, use an existing one or I can create a new security group. So uh, I don't want to touch my existing one. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new security group. Um, for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create SSH access to this. And what that means is it won't be publicly accessible. And I'm just going to do this to my IP and you'll see that now my IP is the only one that can actually get to this and it can do it through SSH. I'll actually show you that in a minute. So we'll review and launch. So here's everything that we want to check out and we can go ahead and we can launch this. Now, um, here's where I'm going to get my SSH keys. And so I can proceed with an existing one, but for the sake of this, we'll create a new pair together. Um, so I'll just call this a uh, video tutorial, right? And now I can download my key pair. So it's going to ask me where I want to save them. Um, so I'll just save this on my desktop for now. Let's go ahead with a new folder. Yes, key pair. Right. And we'll put this in there. We'll go ahead and we'll save that. So now I have my my private key. You want to make sure that you don't actually lose that because you'll never be able to get this back. Uh, this is the only time that Amazon will actually give it to you. So we'll launch that instance. And now we'll see that things are underway. And so if we go back and we check out uh, the instance here, you can see that Amazon is now setting up. It's pending and you can see it's initializing here. So while it does that, what we're also going to do is set up a uh, database with Amazon's relational database service. And the reason why we're doing that and not actually putting it onto the uh, EC2 instance is because Amazon service is awesome. Uh, it is a little bit more money, uh, not crazy expensive but they do a lot of the DBA stuff for you. Um, they have it tweaked uh, and perform, performing very well. So we're gonna go ahead and under services, we're gonna go to database and we're gonna go to RDS. And so here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to instances and we're gonna launch a DB instance. And so we're gonna use MySQL. Uh, so I don't want multi uh, AZ deployments. What this means is you would have it in multiple regions um, is it regions? Yeah, it's, it's for high availability, right? So, um, I think it's regions. I, I apologize. I can't remember if it's regions or not, or if it's just different data centers, pretty sure it's regions. Um, but anyways, um, you know, if you were doing this for a production site, um, you probably want to do that so that you have failover. I don't, uh, because again, um, just using the free tier, although it's not really free for me anymore. Uh, but in case you are as well, so we'll just go next step. Here we have the, the option here. You don't really need to touch any of this. You know, you, you really only have one license. Uh, the engine you can actually choose, but it won't affect you, um, at least at the time of recording this. And so uh, my DB instance class, again, I'm gonna choose the smallest one. Um, I think on my production site, I use a small. I'm just gonna use micro here. Um, they all come with different things, right? So it depends on, on how big your site is gonna be. And these all have different costs associated with them. So you wanna check those out. Again, not doing multi, multiple uh, AZ deployment. And 
as like I mentioned before, we're going to go general purpose, but if you're in high traffic provisioned or high traffic site, you might want to use provisioned there. General purpose. I'm just going to uh, allocate, I don't know, 10 gigs, right? Um, you have the ability here. Drupal sometimes, again, if you have a huge site and you have logging turned on and the rest of it, um, and you're not actually tr um, clearing tables, uh, your database can grow, but um, it really depends on how much traffic you're going to be getting. So DB instance identifier. Um, here, this is going to be uh, the name for the actual instance itself. And so we're just going to call this uh, video tutorial, right? And so uh, the master username, we'll just call it video tutorial. Tutorial, oops, user, right? And the password, so it doesn't really matter because I'm going to get rid of this guy anyways. Right, okay, so there we go. So I can go with my next step, uh, of course. We'll just call this video user, right? Okay, so now here we have the ability to choose uh, VPC. So this is the uh, virtual private cloud, right? Um, so just a, a private network that you have. So I'm just gonna use my default one. Uh, again, subnet is gonna be default. Publicly accessible, um, you can't choose this after it's actually launched. Um, there are some workarounds, but you, you, this instance won't ever be able to be changed from publicly accessible or not publicly accessible. Um, you might want to leave it publicly accessible if you're going to be connecting to it through a third party tool like Navicad or, you know, a workbench or something like that. Um, I'm going to say no, just so that I can show you how you can lock it down. And then uh, you only have access to it from the EC2 instance. So whatever is from within the same VPC. So I'm choosing no. I've got um, availability zone, no preference, don't care. Uh, security groups. Uh, so I'm just going to go with my default security group. Is it my default or no? We just created one. So. Um, my launch wizard there. Anyways, we'll check that out in a second. Uh, and so my DB name is just, this is gonna actually be the production database name that you're gonna give. Uh, it's gonna be the first database that it creates in this instance for you. So let's call this video tutorial, right? So there's my database port, um, parameter option group. Again, these are customizable uh, related to the actual options for my SQL and that kind of thing. So we're not gonna touch them here uh, and I'm not gonna encrypt. Now you have the ability to do automated backups, right? And so here, um, default seven days and backup windows when you wanna actually do this. Um, so you might wanna actually select this window and choose it so it's your low time in uh, UTC. Uh, so me being Eastern, I think it's something like five hour difference. Uh, but anyways, I'm just gonna choose no preference. It'll back up whenever it backups. Um, and I'm gonna allow the auto minor version upgrade. Um, and then again, my maintenance window uh, when I would allow them to do uh, maintenance stuff. So again, no preference, just because this is a test, you might want to actually set those. So we'll go ahead and we'll launch that. So it's being created. And so now if we go to my security groups, yeah, that's fine. We go to instances, you can see it's creating my micro instance now. And if we check out, where are we? If we go back to EC2, we'll see I've got one running instance. And so it's running, it's up and it's available now. So in the next video tutorial, we'll actually SSH into that and we will set up Drupal.